The job you have, whenever you're locked up, in a lot of ways defines who you are to the other inmates. They might forget what your first name is, they might forget where you're from, or what the crime you committed was, but they're gonna remember where you work. Because what you do tells them what you can do for them. And that is, of course, the most important thing that one inmate knows about another inmate, is what he can do for them. If, for instance, if you need some burritos smuggled out of the kitchen, you don't just go around asking inmates at random. You go find the kitchen workers and talk to them. Something taken across the yard, you talk to the yard crew. Something taken into a building, you talk to the building porters, the guy that sweep and mop and maintain the building. The job that I tended to have whenever I was incarcerated was clerk. Clerk is kind of a blanket term. It means any inmate who fills out forms or types, does clerical or administrative duties. Basically the guys that do the low-level functions that keep the paperwork flowing that every bureaucracy needs. I got my first clerk job whenever I was at High Desert. What happened is that I had been doing volunteer work in the education department, helping inmates get their GEDs, and whenever I finished that, it so happened that the teacher I'd worked under mentioned to the sergeant that I could type pretty well. The sergeant came to my door a couple days later and said, uh, Hey, I'm a channel. I, I hear you can type. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can type. I type 100 words a minute. No problem. I said, No shit. Hey, I got a job for you tomorrow if you're not full of it. We're going to take you in there, have you do a typing test. Do you really type that fast? You got a job tomorrow. I was excited. A job means a lot of things. Uh, for one, and I, I know this sounds kind of corny, but I got to contribute. I had to be doing some good. I wouldn't just be sitting in a concrete box waiting. I would be productive. In addition to that, I, I'd make a couple of bucks. I think the job paid 17 cents an hour. It doesn't sound like much, but uh, try living without that 17 cents an hour. It adds up. Most importantly, it was going to get me off the yard. It's required on a real yard that you spend it all the time that you can out where the fights happen, out where the stabbings happen, in case something kicks off so that you're there. But if you have a job, of course you have to be at the job instead. There's no harm, no foul on that. You were working instead of getting stabbed. That's not your fault. So I figured a job was going to keep me safer, get me away from the stupidity and violence. That was the plan. I show up to work the next day, I pass my typing test, and they're kind of showing me the ropes, and uh, just within the first hour, an officer makes a joke. He says, hey look, a new white clerk, anyone want to bet on how long he'll last? I laughed along, you know, I don't get the joke, but I don't want to alienate myself, so I ha ha ha, and kind of get myself out of that social situation. Pull one of the other inmates aside. Hey, uh, what's he talking about? How long I'll last? I got a bunch of years to do, man. I'm going to last a while. And that's whenever they explained to me. I was going to be stuck between a rock and a hard place. Apparently, the, the white gang expected the clerk that was in there to steal from the cops, to, if a white inmate had been written up for a rules violation report and was in trouble, it was the clerk's job to go find that paperwork and lose it, destroy it, hide it, do something so that the inmate wouldn't get into any trouble. This was going to be a problem because what tended to happen is that the officers found out about this, and one of two things happened. Either you offended an officer personally, you stole his report and he took it personally and he beat the hell out of you, or he framed you for a crime. He found some drugs or a knife on you. Or if you were a little luckier, you didn't offend that officer personally, but they decided to get you as a group. And they'd lean on you, tell you you had to be a rat, and start informing on the gang because they'd caught you breaking the rules. And it was going to be all bad for you either way. You do this, the inmates are going to find out about it, and they're going to stick you. Maybe they won't kill you. Maybe it'll just be a you know, nice piece of shit cut across your face, or you know, they stab you 14 times in the stomach and give you a colostomy bag, but they were not fucking around to high desert. This was not a, gosh, golly, gee whiz, don't worry about it, Aaron. It was a stabbing place. <laughs> 
So I had to think my way out of this damn situation because I was, again, stuck between a rock and a hard place. I went to my sergeant, the guy that hired me. I said, hey, Sarge, it's my understanding that what's going to happen is the gang's going to lean on me. I'm going to come in here and start stealing paperwork. You're going to take it personally, lean on me to be a rat. I'm going to get stabbed. Is that about the long and the short of it? And he laughed. He said, yeah, that tends to be what happens. But hey, it's not personal. Just don't steal from us. Don't lose the paperwork. And we'll won't, we won't have a problem. Okay, that's a place to start. So if I follow the rules, the cops aren't going to sweat me too hard. And then I go to the inmates, I go to the other shop callers, and I go, hey guys, uh, I'm the new clerk there in the program office. I'm going to be the guy who sees all the write-ups that come through. And they kind of laugh and go, oh yeah, we wanted to talk to you about that. Here's the deal. And I know what the deal is. It's all bad. I cut them off. I go, I know, I know what you want is I'm supposed to go in there and uh, lose paperwork and steal stuff and get away with what I can. How about I don't do that? And they laugh. <laughs> yeah, how about you do? This is kind of an offer you can't refuse moment, you know, is uh, either I'm going to do what I'm supposed to or else they're going to have to make an example out of me. There's no politely refusing to do this job. But I got a plan and I lay it out. I go, guys, listen. I can steal, what, three, four, five reports before I get caught, and then it's all bad for me. Or, I can read every report that comes through that office, and pretty regularly there's going to be little mistakes. The cops are not going to have done their due diligence. There's going to be a way you can beat the report in the rules. I'll read the rules, I'll find the way to beat the report, and I'll just walk to that inmate's house, give him a copy of the report, and tell him what his defense is and how to beat it. You know, it won't be the first three, four, or five times that something comes across my desk, but over the course of a couple of months, we can beat dozens of these things instead of me just getting what I can and getting caught and then me being screwed. Everybody wins this way. They went for it, and it worked. I stayed in that job for almost two years. I asked, and the record in the past little while, as far as anybody could remember, was three months somebody had stayed in that job before me. Luck as much as anything else, I suppose, but, you know, I've, I've thought my way out of a nasty situation. And that's the point, really. N not the getting out of trouble. I mean, bad things happen. Sometimes you figure out a way out of them, sometimes you don't. But the thinking. I've never regretted taking the time to think about the smart choice, or the right choice, when I was confronted with a bad situation. I could have taken the easy way out. I could have uh, just went in and lost some write-ups for the other inmates, helped them get away with things. I probably could have gotten away with it, too. But in the final analysis, that makes me responsible for them. If somebody would have gotten an extra couple of years because of some wrongdoing they committed while incarcerated, and I make it so they get away with it clean, and then they get out and do something terrible, kill a child in this hypothetical, I suppose. I have to own that. I made that happen by breaking the rules, breaking the law to help them get away with their wrongdoing. You can argue I, I was kind of doing that anyway, right? I was a jailhouse lawyer type. I was making it so that the other inmates did the least amount of extra time that they had to for the wrongdoing they committed. But I was doing it within the law. And that really is an important distinction, is being within the law. Bad things are going to happen because of the choices that you make, but if you at least follow the law whenever you do it, then you know that it was legal. It may not have been just, but at least it was legal. So if you're confronted with a situation, or the easy choice, maybe even it seems like the right choice, is to break the law, think. Think your way out of it. Because there will be lots of opportunities for you in prison to make that easy choice again and break the law again and stay there. Because that's the end result. You keep taking the easy way out, you keep breaking the law, you die in 10 by 12 cell. Don't break the law. Don't go to prison.